evening is a slightly different sermon than normal, if you caught the title, because now we put the titles up before, uh, before sermon time. You can see it up on the TV screens. But the, the title of my sermon, if you didn't see it, is Aliens in Light of the Bible. And that's not a clickbait title. All right? This is for real. I'm actually, I'm actually going to preach on this. And like I said, it's a little bit different. I hope it's a lighter sermon, you know, especially you go out soul winning and people come back and then you see eyes start to drift and stuff. You know, I'm not planning on preaching really long on this subject tonight. I think it should be a, a shorter topic, but it is for real. I am preaching on this. Um, and there's a few reasons I'll get into that in a little bit. But let's start off. Uh, you can keep your place in Genesis 1. Uh, it's not hard to find it again, but flip over to le- uh, Hebrews 11, verse number 34. Because this, this truly isn't clickbait, um, and when I say the word aliens, I'm actually using the word that, that is probably what people think of today when you think of aliens, like ETs, like, like people from outer space and things like that. That's what I'm talking about. Now, when the Bible refers to aliens, though, because I'm going to be dealing with that subject, you know, just in case, you know, some people might be really ignorant. I doubt there's any here in our church, but, you know, people might read the Bible and the King of the Bible and see the word aliens and think that it's talking about people from outer space. That's not what it's talking about. Okay, in the Bible, when we're looking at, if you look up every reference of the word alien, the word alien just means foreigner. Okay, in the Bible, when we're looking at that, I just want to, and this is, I'm not going to spend much time on this at all, other than just right now, just kind of pointing this out. Hebrews 11:34. this is the, the hall of faith, right? You have all these great stories of great men of faith and all these great things they've done. So verse 34 says, quench the violence of fire. Just talking about all these people that, that have done these things. They quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, they were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. And this says, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. So that's not talking about an invading Martian army that came in and like these men of God stood up against them. It's just talking about foreigners, right? Foreign invaders came into the land and these men of God had this great faith, and they were able to, to turn away these, these great armies. And you read about in the scripture, right? Everything that's being talked about in Hebrews 11 is all history that's actually literally brought up in scripture. People who did these great things, you could describe it back to, you know, it's talking about quenching the, uh, the violence of fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into this burning, fiery furnace, and, and it didn't harm them, right? All these various things, escaping the edge of the sword. You know, they all have their place in Scripture and, are, and, and have specific examples of that. So turning to flight the armies of the aliens, many examples of that were, were huge forces of, of, of foreigners came in and attacked and they had to turn away and they, they ran away um, because God was fighting the battles for them. So that's the first point. I just want to point that out, right? Now, it's important to point that out because nowhere, nowhere in the Scripture are we going to see anything about life anywhere else other than on planet Earth. So when we think about this subject, you got to first just understand if you're going to believe in that. Now, look, I'm not like if people believe in it, I don't even care. I don't even know if anyone does. There, as I mentioned this morning, I was looking at news articles and stuff yesterday. I kind of got a prominent idea for this morning sermon, but then also for this evening sermon as well. Believe it or not, there's been a lot of, st- and I don't know how much you guys have been following news, but I've been seeing these things recently about these, you know, uh, unclassified documents, and it's actually been in the news a lot about, like, UFO stuff. There's been a lot of stuff being reported about UFOs, so it actually got me thinking. I'm like, you know, this actually could be a very important sermon just for people to be like, I've never heard, like, I've never heard a sermon on aliens before <laughs> in the Bible. <laughs> I've never heard one. Um, and it may sound silly. I hope it's not too silly, but I, I would like to just give a biblical reasoning as to why I, I don't believe in any other life outside of our planet existing anywhere. Um, I think there's plenty of evidence from Scripture that we can deduce that this, I mean, th- that it's, it's foolishness to think that there's other life outside of there because the whole first of all the whole premise of that comes from the concept that everything happened by chance right so the reason why there's people even believing in all you know but the universe is so huge and vast and enormous and there has to be life somewhere else why well if it happened here it probably happened somewhere else is the thought process for that but we don't believe in evolution 
We don't believe in the Big Bang. We believe that God created everything, right? And we started off here in Genesis chapter 1 because it goes over creation. And everything, everything that's made is made in these six days of creation. This is the universe as we know it is all in Genesis chapter 1. I mean, it's, that's everything. He made all of it. <coughs> so when we start to read this, and, and we're going to go through a little bit of Genesis chapter 1, hopefully you can see this, that, that everything points to the earth and man on the earth and everything about, you know, it, it's not going to make sense to think, to, to, to even believe that there would be other life forms on these other planets you know, having some similar type of an existence to ours when we look at how special, because the earth is special. Mankind is special. This is creation is special. But everything, when God made everything, is still revolving around our planet. Everything. Now, ultimately everything is for the, the pleasure of God Almighty, but Nowhere in this account of all the creation, everything being done, is he talking about any life forms being created anywhere else. Whereas it specifically mentions life being created here on earth. And kind of specific with the land animals, with the sea creatures, with the winged fowl. You know, it, kind of, it starts listing off different types of life forms, even plant life forms being all created at different times and specifically mentioned what day they were created and when it happened. So to think that there might be some other life created somewhere else, we have no reason to even believe that. And it wouldn't make sense that that, that would happen when it's not told to us here. You could say, well, God might just think that we don't need to know that. But life being created is a big deal. I mean, just life, in, in, I mean, that's a miracle in itself. Nobody can reproduce life. Life just is, is, is extremely important. And I'm going to get into some other aspects then of, you know, it, you know giving a, a, if life were to exist, you know, what about then this, 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 this. So we'll get into that a little bit. But I want to start just with, the, just with the creation story, right? Just with what God's telling us is true about creation. Look at verse number 14. We're not going to reread all of Genesis chapter 1. But the Bible reads, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So this is talking about the lights in the firmament of the heaven. And he's going to tell us that there's a, a bigger light and a smaller light. So it's talking about the sun and the moon. And the purpose of these is for signs, seasons, days, and years. Signs, seasons, days, and years where? Here. <laughs> right? Right here. That, that's what gives us our night and our day. And it, you know, everything, the reason for these being created is for the existence on planet Earth. Verse 15, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it, was so. it wasn't to give light off to some other planet to be some star in some other world. It was to give light here upon the earth. Verse 16, and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. They were created to do something for earth, not the other way around, for sure. And it says, and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, because again, we could go through all of this and, and all the days and all the plants and animals being created. But basically everything's created is finished. And, and it gives a, a little recap here in verse number one. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. So basically, I mean, everything out in the universe Six days, it was all done. All created. So if there was any other life created anywhere, it would have to be happening in this time frame. But we don't see that being mentioned anywhere in the creation story. So we, we don't have a... I guess my point is, and as we go through this, we're going to see there's not really good reason to believe it at all other than just trusting in... I don't know... Uh, at this point, it's still all hearsay or these stories of things. And the other reason I'm bringing this up, though, is because I think it can have somewhat of an impact, one, on Christianity in general, 
And I honestly think that it can be similar to like a flat earth type of thing where you can, you can kind of make Christianity look stupid by, by buying into all the, the alien stuff. And, you know, we have enough beliefs that are contrary to the world that we need to stand on that are biblical that are going to make us look way far out there <laughs> to people. We don't need to add any more on top of that. Right? Especially when there's no evidence in Scripture for it. Right? I think it's a good... Now, you have your personal belief, whatever, but I, I think we're going to see... Hopefully, I'll be able to show you that, that it's an illogical and it makes no sense and, and it's not supported at all by Bible that, that there's life anywhere else in this world. I think there's, there's further proof besides just the creation that we're going to get into. Um, hopefully, that'll seal the deal for you and make you understand that, yeah, there's no way, no way that that could be true. And I, and I believe wholeheartedly that this isn't a question... That's a fact that, that there is no other life anywhere else. That God didn't create any alien beings anywhere else in the world but here. And I think that's provable by Scripture. Um, so that's one reason. But I also think that, you know, this UFO stuff, like why is it then in the news so much? One, it's intriguing. You know, people think it's just interesting. So news are looking to sell newspapers. They're looking to get clicks. They're looking to get advertising and everything else. But it also could be used as a deceptive tool to deceive people as well, and, and you know, I, I've already I've heard about the Project Blue Beam stuff. If you're not familiar with that, it's the you know it's a conspiracy theory, but it's one that that I think holds could hold some water. It may, there may be some truth to it, where there's technology that that um, is either being produced or is, is already available. To uh, essentially, it's like it's like shining like holographic images, and and being able to show. Uh, as if there's like aliens or whatever you want and like people can see things that aren't really there, right? So it's kind of, I mean, just imagine very, very simplistic terms, just being able to shine a projector up into the clouds, right? And you're just playing a movie and it's not really there, but this is what people are seeing. So it's not quite that simple because the technology is much more advanced to be able to show something that really looks real. But that may be something that's used like as a lying sign and wonder to kind of usher in the the antichrist and to get people to to kind of come together and follow i don't know it's a possibility so to me it's at least enough of a of a reasonable possibility to kind of bring up and answer so that if there's any christians out there thinking well what does this mean because if there's life on other planets it could literally overthrow the faith of some well, the Bible never talks about this. And if people are coming, oh, we just found this other life here. And, this, you know, this disproves the Bible and everything else. Look, there's not life on other planets. Now, there is creatures, there are creatures, and we're getting this too, that exist outside of Earth. And we know about them. And the Bible talks about them. And I think... Um, this may also... And we're going to get... That's kind of the last point. So I'll, get, I'll save that for the end. Uh, but that may be a good explanation for some things that may seem unexplainable to some. But, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of weird doctrines. And if you're in Genesis, let's just flip over to Genesis 6, because I, I kind of want to cover this very, very briefly. I preached on this in the past quite a while ago. But it's akin to the, to the Nephilim doctrine. Kind of, you know, this, this idea, the concept of aliens coming to our, to our planet and stuff. Because the Nephilim doctrine is basically believes, and, and you know, I call it Nephilim doctrine, but um, briefly, people who believe that angels came down, you know, fallen angels came down and, and fornicated with, with human women and created these giants that, you know, that when the Bible's talking about giants, that that was their offspring. Um, it's another silly belief and is easily easily disproven just by reading the scripture for what it says and i'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because i could go in depth on the sons of god and who all that is but just by looking at genesis chapter 6 because this is where this whole thing comes from let's start reading in verse number one the bible reads and it came and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them 
that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So the, the doctrine will say, oh, that, when it says sons of God there, that's talking about these angels. Okay, well, nowhere in the Bible is sons of God referring to angels, which they're, you know, they're going to claim, oh, it is, and Job, and all these other places. I know that. I'm not going to spend the time to disprove that right now. But this is what they'll say. Now, it doesn't say angels there. It says sons of God. So they're making an inference, or they're just making an application. doesn't say that. Verse 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. And this is right before the flood. Mind you, Genesis chapter 6. Okay? Then verse 4 says, There were giants in the earth in those days. Great. So there's giants in the earth prior to the flood. And it says, And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Do you catch that? The Nephilim doctrine says that these, these angels that the Bible is calling here sons of God came in under these women and produced these giants. But what does the Bible say? It says there were giants in the earth in those days. And also, what's those next words? After that. So there's giants in the earth. And then also, after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, then these other people were born. So are the sons of God coming into the daughters of men making the giants? No. Case closed. That's it. I mean, this is, I'm not, again, I'm not going to go all in depth into all the different things that they want to bring up and, and really go down the rabbit trail of the sons of God. But I mean, if you just read the verse, what it says, it says after that. It's after that. When the sons of God came in and the daughters of men. Okay, so even if you wanted to say that these sons of God were, were angels or whatever, they didn't create the giants because the giants were already there. This happened afterwards. So, but it's this, it's this type of appeal to a, a, a knowledge or, or kind of a fantastical type of a thing that draws people in, right? And, and be careful with that to not get so caught up in something that may seem really cool or, or whatever, or things that, oh, you don't know this. You know, be careful of the, of the, of the occult type knowledge, that, that, that wanting to know things that no one else knows. Because it can also lead you into some silliness. And while I do believe in conspiracies, like conspiracies are real, conspiracies are just people trying to do things in dark and in secret and not let other people know about it, like that happens all the time. There's not, I mean, it's, you know, there's a bad name thrown on conspiracy theorists these days as if it's some, you know, some label because uh, you know, there's a lot of people who want to cover up some truth, so they want to downplay the reality or the truthfulness of what some people are saying. So they'll just label you, oh, you're just a conspiracy theorist. Well, yeah, I mean, there's conspiracies are real. Like, they exist out there. So, but unfortunately, we've got some other weird beliefs that get lumped in, and then they, they, they want to make you guilty by association and try to say, like, oh, you believe all this stuff. Like, no, we don't. There are some things that are going on that are wicked and evil, and it's true. And then there's other things that are just kind of, you know, people come up with this stuff. And, you know, I've seen the, the evidence. They want to say that, like, oh, the Smithsonian is hiding all these huge bones of, like, these giants that were, like, ridiculously tall. And, and I preach that. You know, I did preach that here. I preached this in Judges. What chapter was that? Early on in the church history, I, 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 I preached a sermon about this, about the whole Nephilim thing. You can check it out if you're interested in it. Um, where well, I went in all the dimensions of like what people were saying, how big these things were. And, and, and they're talking about giants being like, like 400 feet tall or something crazy. Like just, I mean, just some ridiculous, like 40 stories. And it's kind of like, you know, you actually have to, you, you can't just buy into this stuff. You got to think about it rationally going, well, what did they eat? <laughs> right? I mean, if you have a body that long, like, what are you eating as a human being? And, and where did you live? And where did you sleep? And how did you procreate? How, you know, like, 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 are you finding other giants? And where are you staying? You know, like, 
Like, that's huge. That's huge. 40 stories high. Like, that's, you, you actually have to stop and go, wait, hold on a second here. Now, is that real or is maybe this supposed bone that no one can see and no one knows and it's a big cover-up, maybe that's not true. <laughs> now, we know there were giants and the Bible tells us how tall they were and they were a little bit taller than people are today on air. I mean, it's man's, average man's around six feet tall. The giants were closer to nine. And, and so, so nine to ten feet tall or something, that's, that's not some huge stretch of the imagination to have someone you could, you know, and we know that. You look at the Guinness Book of World Records, right? There are people that, that have grown to be that tall that we know for a fact today. So why is this, you know, that's what the Bible's talking about. Anyways, um, Genesis, and continuing on even in this passage, verse 6 says, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. So if the problem was that these angels went in unto women, then why is God angry with the man? It's like, wouldn't you be angry with these fallen angels and destroy the fallen angels? But no, he's angry with man because it's the sons of God are men, not angels. And it says, and the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. It's like, this, this is the source of all the problem here is man. It's not, it's not some Nephilim. It's not something else. But so I guess, I guess one of the lessons you could learn is when you hear these things and, and they might sound fascinating, intriguing. Oh, that's really cool. Right. Don't let your desire for something maybe to want to be true because it sounds so cool and because you're into science fiction and it, <laughs> you know, whatever. Don't let that uh, persuade you when, when you have just God's word in front of you. You kind of take it for what it says and read it carefully. And, you know, it's also when people start taking you down a path, excuse me, it's easier to, to go down that path with them. You kind of see things that you would have never seen before because they're telling you them and you never would have picked that up on your own. Right? People go and, and they'll go to the outside sources and, and you know, the, the whole Nephilim thing, that comes from outside sources, extra biblical resources. The, the measurements I was, I was just talking about come from like, I, I forget if it's the book of Jasher or the book of uh, Enoch or one of these other supposed books that, oh, they're supposed to be in the Bible and they're not because whatever. Or Josephus, or you know, what one of these books? I forget. I can't recall exactly at the moment which one has those those measurements recorded. But it's not coming from God's word. It's just coming from some other source. It's not God's word. So, you know, take it for what it is. But when we have God's word and you're hearing something that's completely contrary to what this is actually saying, you know, you got to be able to look at it closely and not just, uh, you know, go straight into this stuff without, without actually looking at it and consider and think about it. Um, so back to the whole alien thing. And like, uh, if you think this is silly, like I said, I think there's reason for preaching it. But um, another point comes from Genesis chapter 1 as well. So not only do we have the earth and everything around the earth, is, you know, the focal point of creation is our planet, is where we are. Mankind is unique among all creation. Because we know God created sea creatures, land creatures, air creatures, and angelic creatures as well, because we read about those in Scripture, right? But mankind is different than them all. And the key reason why man is so different is because the Bible says in Genesis 1, verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. What's the likelihood of God creating, and why, any other creature in his own image somewhere else. He already did that here. And, and again, it's, it's one of these things where you have no reason to believe that. And God's telling us what happened here, and he's creating us in his image. We're pretty special. We're very special. And he's given us dominion. And the only thing we don't have dominion over out of his creation are the heavenly creatures. Because we're not dealing in the spiritual world. We're dealing in the physical world. We're in this realm of being on the earth. Um, 
so we're made in, in God's image. You know, if there's these other creatures that are actually smart enough to do, you know, space travel and stuff, they actually have a high level of cognition. It's not like a beast. Like every other animal on this earth, no matter how smart they are, is still a beast. Right? Even the smartest chimpanzee or ape or whatever, they're still beasts. They're still a, a really, really long way away from being a human being. Right? Not, we're not looking at a beast that we have on earth going like, yeah, they're going to earth just as once for all, for everybody. He made that sacrifice one time. Romans chapter 6, verse 9 says, Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. There's no way he's going to go and pay for someone else's sin in some other world and some other planet. He's dying. He's raised to die no more. It happens one time. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. And, and I, to me, I think this is like kind of the crux of everything. Knowing, hey, Jesus died one time. I am he that, that am alive and was dead. And shall live forevermore. I mean, he's... He, he, he died one time. So, if he did this once, and there's these other creatures on some other area, you know, he came here and died on earth. Not somewhere else. Not anywhere else. And in order for any other being to then receive that salvation, they'd have to have the gospel preached unto them. How is that going to happen? How? How are they going to hear about this? What witnesses would be used for them to believe? And witnesses is a big deal in the Bible. I mean, these are witness. You know, we go around and we witness the people. What are we witnessing? We're witnessing the faith. We're witnessing what, you know, what Jesus did for us because we know about it and, and we believe God's word. But um, like in the book of Acts, you turn to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, the witnesses were going around preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they needed to do that. It was incumbent upon them to go and preach what they saw and what they heard and what they experienced, what they, you know. Um, Acts 10, verse 39, the Bible reads, And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. That's the gospel, right? He said, we're witnesses. We're witnesses of what they did. We're witnesses that they, they killed him and hung him on a tree. But God raised him up on the third day and then showed him openly, meaning the resurrected Jesus was shown openly. And he goes on to, they go on to explain, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. So he's saying they, he didn't appear unto everybody. He's appearing unto chosen witnesses. Now, if it was important for God to raise Jesus from the dead and that he's appearing unto chosen witnesses here, wouldn't it also be as important for, that, for what we have? Why would it be different? And there's no answer. See, with things like this, you could just come up with all kinds of different things, but it's not logical. It doesn't make sense. Let's reason together and look at the scriptures on this and see, well, what is the Bible saying and teaching? What's the most reasonable solution? What's the most reasonable explanation for things? Well, the most reasonable explanation, God made us in the image of man. Earth was created and everything is revolving around what's being done here. Life was created here. Jesus came here. Jesus died once for the sins of the whole world. And everything is taking place here. The resurrection is, is coming here. Every, and, and then there's a new heaven and new earth being created and a new Jerusalem. And it's still all happening here. It's the focal point of all of the attention everywhere in Scripture. At this point, I think you'd have to be thinking, well, then maybe there's a whole nother word of God. Well, we'll, we'll be careful with that. A whole nother truth, a whole nother, say, you know, we'll, look, Jesus is the word. Don't go down that path of saying, well, maybe there's all this stuff that we just don't know about because God's not telling us. Careful with that. 
careful with that. You could get into some really into some bizarre uh, territory. The Bible says in verse 42, and he commanded us to preach the God, to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sin. So obviously salvation comes through that and through these witnesses and, and, and everything else. So um, turn if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Because with, with all that being said, it should be pretty obvious that, you know, it doesn't make any sense that God would have created beings on other planets that have civilizations that are traveling through the stars on spaceships and everything else. It's just simply not true. But there are other beings, and we could call them extraterrestrials. Because extraterrestrials means they're not from this earth. Like ter terrestrial, the word terrestrial means like the earth. Okay, the terra, the, the, the land. So it's terrestrial, it's, it's of the earth. Extra means it's, it's outside of the earth. In 1 Corinthians 15, we actually see beings that are created that are not of this earth so so yes there are extraterrestrials that, that's a real thing and it's not the way that people think of et you know et phone home with the i don't even that's probably way too old for most of the people here but um that uh what, what would be what would be a, an updated version <laughs> i don't know it seems like all of that science fiction stuff is like back with Star Trek and Star Wars and even Elf. Who remembers Elf? Anyone remember Elf? Elf, alien life form, right? Isn't that what, what Elf stood for? Some cr this was just like common culture science fiction type stuff, right? People thinking about these things. But... And, and whatever, you want to have a good time with it and, and make jokes. I don't, it, it doesn't matter. But for a Christian, though, thinking, like, honestly thinking about that being real, you know, we need to go to our source of truth and go to the Scripture and say, is this, is this real? Is this true? And no, the concept of, like, these Star Wars going on and you've got this intergalactic federation and all these different beings that are humanoid-like and coming together and doing all this stuff, it's, it's, it's fantasy. It's fiction. It's science fiction. It's not fact. It's not true. And it never will be true. It's not true. But what there is, is there, in, 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 one, in a little bit, a little nugget of truth, is that there are other creatures, though, that are not of this world. So, is it possible that people are having some type of visions or sights of these creatures that are not of this world? Yeah, maybe. I'm, I'm willing to say that, because the creatures we know for sure are real. But then we have to go, and let's just read 1 Corinthians 15 real quickly. Verse number 39, the Bible reads, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 39, all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. Those are all on this earth. We know this. Men, beasts, fishes, birds. But then verse 40 says, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. So terrestrial is on this earth. Celestial is up in the sky or in the heavens. Okay, we call them heavenly. Um, and, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. So the celestial would be extra terrestrial because it's outside of, of this earth. But the Bible just refers to it as a celestial body. Jump down to verse 44. Uh, the Bible reads, it is sown a natural body, is raised a spiritual body. Talking about the resurrection, right? Because we're going we're gonna to experience a resurrection from the dead. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So we are going to attain or receive a spiritual body one day. We don't right now. Right now it's natural. But once our natural body is sown when we die and it's, and it's buried in the earth, at the second coming of Jesus, it's going to be raised again from the dead. It was sown naturally, but it's going to be raised spiritual. So we're going to have a spiritual body. But here's the thing about that. When it comes to us, our celestial body, our spiritual body, it's not going to look that much different than what we look like now in general, right? I mean, same type of form. There's no reason to think anything different because we know that when we see him, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is, for we shall be like him. And if we're already made in the image of God right now and we're going to be conformed to the image of Christ, 
at that resurrection, there's not a huge difference there, right? We're already in his image. So we're just going to be even closer to that image to be conformed to the image of Christ. Um, so we're not just going to look completely different, right? Uh, and, and this is what the Bible is talking about here about a spiritual body. Let's keep reading. Howbeit that was, verse 46, howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So we also know that Jesus Christ was seen in his spiritual body, right? So after he was risen again from the dead, and he looked like a person. He looked like a human being. So these celestial bodies here being referred to in, in 1 Corinthians is still, you, could, you would not mistake them for a human being. So what is it? What is a possibility of strange sightings, people swearing, no, I saw something, you know? Well, there's many possibilities. There's many possibilities. Who knows? There's plenty of people, you know, trying to get you to be deceived, but don't get railroaded into an explanation that requires God to have created some other alien creatures on some other planet because it just didn't happen. When you think about it rationally, it just didn't happen. And, I, you know, I believe there's an agenda behind much of that science fiction. I think it's preparing people to accept other things outside of what the Bible says. And, and it is a, a, a very passive um, conditioning to start accepting things that, that, oh, maybe the Bible's not true. And, you know, to, to see and hear about all this other stuff. And it really has an impact on people. I, I, seriously, like, I've spoken with people, and when movies come out, they can have a serious impact on people, you know, like Star Wars and Star Trek. One of a big one was The Matrix, right? And this was, this, I mean, this was a favorite movie of mine. I loved that movie back in the day, you know, as a worldly person that didn't, didn't, wasn't doing anything for God. I mean, that's probably really old now, but um, it had such an impact on so many people. There's actually literally people were starting to, to consider, like, well, maybe we're in a dream. You know, like kind of thinking that this is science fiction. I mean, someone just created this, and now they're actually considering, like, well, maybe that's the way things really are. And it's not brand new. There are plenty. Of, there's religions that, you know, kind of will teach that maybe we're, we live in like a dream state, that this whole existence isn't really real, but we're just conjured up and living in someone else's dream or whatever, right? All kinds of bizarre things. But people really can, can kind of cling to this stuff. And, and just because it's fascinating, wow, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of, it's an interesting concept, right? That movie is an interesting concept to think, oh, wow, well, maybe... Everything that you're experiencing here is because you're just plugged into some simulation and whatever. It's interesting. But it's still kind of foolish at the same time because it's not reality. I mean, it's definitely foolish. But that interest level gets people hooked and sucked in, but then that could start leading you down these weird you know, thoughts of, of kind of associating that with something that might be real. It's, like, it's not real. I kind of think that things going so crazy right now could be a repercussion of the Twilight Zone. Because <laughs> it feels like that's where we are now. Because things have gotten so crazy, it's like, well, you've just gotten used to it because, well, we're just in the Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone wasn't real. None of it was real. It's all made up stuff. It's just stories. And now it's become reality. <laughs> People have made it real. Anyhow, um, so I bring this up to, to maybe just give a little bit of warning and, and watch out for, for the purposes of, of, you know, people might be promoting this stuff. You see things in the news. You see people who are making claims about what they see. People see a lot of different things and even can be sincere about it, but can be just sincerely wrong about what they've seen. There's also a lot of weird people out there, too, that make a lot of weird claims. And you can't just go, <laughs> go believe in everything 
that, uh, that some of these people say. But turn, if you would, Ezekiel 1 is the last place we're going to look at today, and we're going to close with this. And we're just going to read through Scripture. I'm not going to do very much expounding on it. But Ezekiel 1 gives us a pretty detailed description of, of an angelic, we'll call it an angelic being, or a heavenly creature, another beast, another creature that God has created that exists in heaven, that's in a spiritual realm, a spiritual sense, um, where I can say, okay, well, if someone had a sight or saw something that might have looked similar to this, maybe this creature was, was on earth somewhere or in the sky and, and, and they saw this. I mean, there's, me, there's prophets. Ezekiel saw this. Ezekiel saw this creature, right? And he describes it here for us in the Bible. So if there's any truth to sightings of a being, I would just say it would have to be a creature that God has created. They don't live on some other planet, right? It's not, it's not some alien in, in, in that sense. It would only be able to be something like a creature that we read about here. But even that, I still think, is going to be a very unlikely scenario. Because most of God's creatures that, that men have seen, or, you know, like angels, things like that, have, have all been still, like, human-looking. I don't see anywhere in Scripture a description of a gray. Right? They're called the grays, the, 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 the common, the, the, the big head, right, the big eyes. They're kind of short. Isn't that the most common description of an alien? I mean, isn't that, like, isn't that what they call them? Am I wrong? Or at least one of the names. I think they have probably a bunch of names, but we, just, we don't see that in, in Scripture. Now, Let's read this because we're going to close on this. Like I said, it's kind of a lighter sermon. It's really not some big issue, but because it's been in the news, I kind of wanted to bring it up and, and make you just think about it a little bit. And, and at least if someone brings it up out, because so, you know people always want to bring it down in rabbit trails. Like, well, what about UFOs? What about aliens? What about this? What about that? You might have a couple of, of, of just be like Genesis 1. All right, look, God created everything here. There's no aliens there. Let's move on, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ died one time, you know, he, he doesn't have a separate plan of salvation for some other race of people in some other distant galaxy, like, Jesus is God. God is everywhere, God is omnipresent, so he's not going to, you know, he's not dying all over the place for all these different civilizations. He died once, to die no more. Ezekiel chapter 1, we're going to read through this real quickly, and then, and then we'll close it up. Verse 1 says, now it came to pass in the 13th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Kibar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kibar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself. And a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass." Now, if someone saw a description of something like this, I'd say, well, yeah, that's an, I mean, we've seen this description before. And, and we know that this type of beast exists, this type of creature exists. Verse 8 says, and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. They four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went everyone straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. And they went, every one straight forward, where the spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. 
It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now, I have in my notes here going basically all the way through this chapter, but I'm going to stop here just, just for sake of time. Read through all of this later. You could see this is probably the most detailed and the most descriptive uh, account of a creature that's not looking like a human being. But it still doesn't match what people are claiming with the UFOs and the aliens, right? So all that said, just to don't believe everything that you read or see. And, and when you start going down rabbit trails, be careful on that. Um, you know, honestly, my opinion on, on most of the sightings is I'm sure there's people testing technology, governments and agencies that are testing things that not everyone is aware of. Even people that might be kind of deeper into government might not be aware of. And, you know, you could be seeing things that just people just don't know about yet. It is, it is unidentified, but it doesn't mean it comes from another planet. Uh, that's the, to me, that's the most reasonable explanation. And then also remember that, you know, just because someone says something doesn't make it true either. You could have testimonies of people, yeah, but this person sounded real convincing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? A lot of people can be very convincing. And I'm not saying people who make these claims are psychopaths, but, you know, psychopaths can make some very convincing claims, too. You know, habitual liars can make some very convincing claims. Vagrants on the street that are asking for money, they can make some very convincing arguments and claims and stories about why they're in the position. You know, people can make all kinds of stuff that sounds very convincing or compelling. It doesn't make it true, right? So, um, that's where I stand on aliens. <laughs> I told you I was going to go into this. It wasn't, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a joke. I think, I think it's a, not, not a very important topic, but still one important enough to, to let's, let's deal with it, right? I don't want to run away from an issue or, or feel like we can't answer something biblically. And especially as it's, you know, it's being talked about. These things are going to be talked about, and, and I know this question comes up. I've had people ask me out soul before. Not very often, but it still comes up. You know, people are interested in this stuff. So what does the Bible say about aliens? I think we, we've, we've dealt with that. I think it kind of puts the, the no rubber stamp on that one. So let's bow our heads have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for uh, your word and for all the, the truth and wisdom that you give us, Lord. Um, we pray that you would just help us to become uh, better soul winners, better Christians, Lord, and that um, you'd work in our lives and, and, and help us to um, just understand all the things that we need to know. And, and increase our wisdom, and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.